Hello and welcome to the Small Steps to Wellness show with me, your host, Mari Craig, where we discuss how we can achieve more wellness in our lives one small step at a time. I am especially interested in nutrition and am a student of culinary medicine, but I'm also a mother interested in how I can achieve more wellness for us as a family and for my children. The past eight odd years, I've really looked into this and being a natural skeptic, I have learned to become more open-minded while staying skeptical because I have found that this has really helped me learn and widen my horizon. In the Small Steps to Wellness show, we will be talking to lots of different people and hearing lots of different topics, not just around nutrition, but around well-being in general. I am really excited to share this journey that I'm on with you all. If you would like to be a guest on this podcast, I would love to hear from you. The easiest way is probably to reach me on Instagram under at small steps to wellness. And if you have a suggestion of a topic or somebody you think, oh, that person has to be on this show, then please also do let me know. Finally, I love getting feedback on what you've particularly enjoyed. If you'd like to get in touch, again, head over to Instagram. And I also really, really enjoy some good reviews on wherever you listen to your podcasts. Now, on with today's episode. So what were you saying about the cumulative effects? I was just saying that if you remember a couple of years ago when I was doing, for me, for me personally, this is, I was doing a 10 day cleanse every month, 100%, you know, none of this um, leaving bits out. It was done. All of the 10 guidelines I did 100%. And then I tagged on the end of that 10 days as the five day restoration plan that we do. And then not every month, but most months I then tagged on the four day phytonutrient fasting so I did that every single month for seven months and I got into my wedding suit which wasn't really the aim but what just the, the point that I'm mentioning is that that I, I hadn't fitted into that suit for I've been married 28 years this year and I hadn't fitted back into it since for, for 20 well for then it was about 26 years so I'm like, so that's massive, absolutely massive for me. And then I kept it off for all oh, 18 months or so. So it was, it was huge. I mean, it was, it wasn't just something that was, a, you know, a fly in the fly in the night sort of thing. It, it was continuous. It, I kept momentum. I kept the weight off. I felt fantastic. Mm. Then here's the thing, Mari. What mm -hmm. then happened is obviously I lost my mum, I lost my dog. And then when the wheels come off, you then start to make one poor choice that then follows with another poor choice. And then before you know it, you've spiraled into a bit of an abyss where you know you shouldn't be because you know that what you're doing is wrong, but grief consumes and then it's that the rest is, is history. So I need to get back to the, to the continuity because I know it works. It's just fantastic and it just makes you feel amazing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting what you're saying, though, about the mental health aspect, because we were saying earlier, weren't we, that I've had a really bad night's sleep. Um, somebody said there was a full moon yesterday. Maybe that's why. Yeah, or new, maybe... new moon. I think it was. Oh, yes. Full moon. Full moon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I I kind of have a bad night's sleep and then I just go, what? what's, what's going on? And then somebody goes, oh, my gosh, the full moon last night. Oh, my gosh, I always feel so messed up. And it, it always coincides. It's really weird. But, you know, we're talking about how, oh, oh and then Freddie uh, starts sort of whining from 5 a.m. He's, like, oh, he's so cranky today. Look, luckily, he's gone to the child mind so she can deal with her crankiness. <laughs> but oh, Amy's laughing. Um, but, you know, I was talking about, I came back. I was making myself a coffee and I'd made these sort of, mm, you buy puff pastry um, and I was buying the gluten-free, dairy-free one because we were trialing a bit of an um, uh, exclusion diet. But that, that puff pastry is so full of crap. It's just unreal. But with really nice tomato sauce and just uh, cheddar cheese on and then you roll it up and you make it like you, yeah, like you would make a cinnamon roll, but you bake them in the oven. It's sort of like mini sort of pizza rolls. They're delicious. And there was one left and I just... I just shoved the whole thing in my mouth. I I wasn't hungry. I wasn't hungry. I I just had a lovely bowl of 
coconut kefir with um, the salted caramel complete and nuts and seeds on top. I was not hungry, but I stood there and as I was making my coffee, it was right in front of me. I was cranky. I had a bad night's sleep. And the whole thing just fitted very nicely into my mouth. And, and that, that was it. And I was supposed to actually be for lunch uh, or for a snack for somebody else later, but no more. And so it's, it's interesting. We were talking about earlier how it is so important for your mental health to make good food choices most of the time. But it's also so hard to make those good food choices where when you're in a state of, I don't know, depression, anxiety, lack of sleep over a long time. It's so hard, isn't it? It is. It's really hard. And I think that the thing is, is that, I mean, I don't like to use the word willpower because some of these cravings, they're, they're driven by the fact that we get these little hits of dopamine every time we have, you know, those extra carbs or something a bit sweet. We get those little, little pleasure hits that the brain feels immediately. So, you know, for people that think, oh, I can't control my cravings, that's why, you know, but I think, for, well, personally for me, there has to be an element of self-control just to get you out of that vicious cycle because it is a vicious cycle. The more you, more you eat like that, the more you want, 100%. So therefore, you, you, you have to make careful substitutes, which is why what we do on our cleanse is really helpful because I think the complete really fits that gap. Mm. Um, it is a really good healthy substitute that um that doesn't spike blood sugar because once you spike that blood sugar that's the, that's the dopamine hit and that's the poor food choices because once that blood sugar falls again that's when you you to make another poor choice and another poor choice and it's just an ongoing cycle so you have to be able to break that cycle with some carefully thought out healthier choices and then once you've broken that cycle it makes life so much more easier and of course as we know when you're doing it together in a group it's it's so much easier because you've got accountability yeah oh my god well. i have to tell you something about accountability <clears throat> i went out with my neighbors um a while back and they were asking me how i was doing with my culinary medicine studies and i was like well you know it's dragging on dragging on got no deadline right and they were like right so we won't go out together again uh, until you could finish the paper you're on. But you've got to set us a date because we don't know how much work this takes. You have to set us a date of uh, when you will be finished with this paper. And I was like, okay, I've, I've put on the spot. And, and they were like, you've got to write it down in our WhatsApp group. So I wrote down um, the 27th of March. So that's as, at the time of this recording, that's tomorrow. I said, before we break up for Easter, so before end of play on the 27th of March, I am going to finish my paper because they were checking in with me and all the rest of it. Yesterday at uh, my baby's nap time, I handed in the paper. Yay. I know, right? <laughs> well done. But you know, but, but you know, like it's, it's, so it's all, it's the accountability thing. Um, it is, it's, it's so real. It's so real. When you've said, I'm going to do this and you have to show the results, I mean, it's, it's powerful what you can do, right? I Absolutely. wanted to ask you, Amy, by the way, because you've been through a bit more recently than uh, than Debbie, um, the, the sort of parenting young children and the whole lack of sleep and making, uh, I guess, poor food choices because you were out of that. Um, do you remember what it's like not to get sleep? <laughs> do I remember? Oh my gosh! What? Oh, where do I, I mean? Newborns? Are we talking like back in? I days? mean, it goes on for a few years, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, the newborn phase is insane, and for me, it was awful. Um, I'm sure there's another podcast of me probably going into a lot more detail. Yeah, about the effects that that had on me, um, not just for food choices, but for everything. Um, but my kids are a bit older now, and still, it's interesting because once your kids sleep through the night and they get into a great sleeping pattern you really notice it when they wake up and say, mummy, I've had a nightmare or, oh, I feel sick. Can you come with me to the toilet? And then you're like, oh God, it's, if you feel like you're back in that newborn phase again, your brain just goes, what? And I guess because being older as well, for me, um, then 
it's going to have an impact on my you know physical strength the next day and mental capacity and you really do feel it well I certainly do the the following day just the impact of being woken up once or twice um you know involuntarily um and yeah it, it really does make a difference and then you kind of wonder the next day why why sometimes you have to put two and two together when you're thinking why am I feeling so cranky and irritable like what, what's happened like you know nothing's kind of weird's gone on today and then you're like oh actually yeah I was woken up last night and you know I haven't had a great night's sleep you know the, the power of sleep on our, our health is sometimes overlooked isn't it it's oh yeah so, so important because you may well be eating healthily and you know exercising regularly and you know, doing all the things that you should be doing, drinking plenty of water. But if you're not getting enough sleep, you haven't got that time to rest and digest, as they say. Um, you know, it is definitely one of the pillars of health that must be addressed. And while I was listening to Debbie talking about the cumulative effect of, you know, doing that regular cleanse, as as we like to call it, the phytonutrient cleanse that we do, um, I would just like to echo the effects it's had with on me. Um, we've been doing them for six years maybe now I, I think you've been doing it for longer Amy even longer yeah I, mean, I was just thinking like as as I do them now and I still do them regularly once a month um look, looking back to when I first started I've got people who join and do the cleanses with me for the first time and the the things that they experience I think yeah that used to happen to me when I started doing the cleanses but they don't seem to happen so much now like, why is that? So, for example, they might get really, really chronic headaches in the first couple of days. I don't tend to, I remember it, but it doesn't really seem to happen to me. It did happen once, um, a couple of cleanses ago, when I realised that I'd probably overdone it in, in the few weeks building up to that with either processed foods or sugary foods or maybe alcohol. There must have been some kind of celebration involved and my toxic load would have been higher. So then when I did start the cleanse then I could feel that headache but it it only lasted 12 hours as in like by the time I woke up the next day it it had gone but I definitely noticed the difference of that cumulative effect because over time the body gets used to that feeling of you know eating well living well moving well doing all of the the things that are required to to have a good cleanse so to speak and um yeah, I'm just really glad that I've continued to do it. Like you said, Mari, that continuity, that consistency, it really does pay off. And I think for me, it's helped me listen to my body because, and also the people who I help when they join and, and try to do it as well, they they start to report different feelings within, you know, when they finish the cleanse and they go back and have that cheese on pizza or something, or, um you know, their, their first coffee with caffeine in after having not had caffeine for 10 days, the, the, the feeling that they then experience is quite stark, as in you might, you know, I or they might not have noticed it before. Um, and it just makes some things really quite obvious. And that's how I discovered that I was intolerant to dairy um, because I then reintroduced some dairy back into my, my diet and my IBS symptoms started to come back and I was like I wonder if it's the dairy so I then went off and did certain you know intolerance testing and things like that um but it yeah has 100% helped me learn to listen to my body but there are times where like you were mentioning Mari where you haven't had a good night's sleep you've got loads of stuff going on whether it's work family anything and the overwhelm is high you know as a as a parent especially when you've got to juggle all of that you know I call myself the PA to an unpaid PA to three people. Um, I call myself the everything butler. I think it's from Bluey, but the everything <laughs> <love> butler. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, the everything butler. There you go. And you know, you've got a lot to think about. And when it's a particularly busy time in the schedules of those people, you know, a lot of the choices that that we can make can kind of go, you know, down the let's say the negative side of the of the sliding scale. Um <clears throat> And it's made me understand the relationship that I have with food. When you hear about people comfort eating, um, you know, the first thing you think, right, well, I haven't had any breakfast yet. I'm really hungry, but I don't have time to make something healthy in my head. That's what I'm saying. When actually I've learned, yes, I do have time to make something healthy. It doesn't, it's actually quicker to scramble up an egg and pair it with like some cherry tomatoes and, you know, some olives or something on the side. It That's just as quick as pouring some cereal, getting to the fridge, 
finding the milk and pouring it and you know it really isn't that much of a difference in terms of time but in your head you're like oh I've got so much going on and it's like why am I doing that so the relationship with food also becomes quite evident after years and years of listening to the body prioritizing you know the, our, our well-being and our health above all um but yeah, I, I, there was one more thing that I'd thought of and it's gone now, but it'll come back to me as well, I'm sure. But, Have you had um, a bad ICE yeah. too? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've I just got just a lot of add... this morning. <laughs> oh, bless you, Amy. I was just going to add to that because people's stress levels, I think we live in such a fast-paced um, world at the minute. And, and you know, we were talking about your stress at the moment, Amy, with your um, situation that you've got going on. So, um and people don't realise that actually how much stress levels impact. And of course, it impacts sleep, which will impact on everything that we've just been talking about. But sometimes I, I find um, clients come to me and they're doing pretty well with the diet and everything, but they're just not moving forward. And, and you know, it's sometimes now when I speak to people, my first question is not what are you eating but what are you doing to relax? You know, what's, what's your, what's your downtime? And, you know, they'll say, oh, no, I'll be sitting on the telly, sitting on the sofa watching the telly with a glass of wine. No, that's not relaxing. That's resting. You're not, at, to me, relaxation is active. So you actively do something to relax. So you, you might do some breathing or you might do some meditation or you might do a yoga, a, a few yoga moves, or you might read a good book or you might go and have a bubble bath. Those are relaxation times when you are getting your body out of the sympathetic into the parasympathetic which is really important so you're bringing those cortisol levels down and because cortisol of course once it's high will feed that need for carbohydrates so because it the but it's what it's encouraging the body to refuel after a stressful event and of course if those cortisol levels stay high then we're never gonna you know we're always going to be cra craving something so that's why it's important to make sure that that you should do some relaxation every day and particularly before you eat. I always say to people, you shouldn't eat if you're stressed. If you're stressed, you, re you really need to de-stress before you eat. So some nice deep breathing before you start or perhaps at this particular time, just skip that meal because you're in no position to digest it. So there's lots of other little tips. And of course, we get all those tips, don't we, in, in, the, in the group when we, when we do our cleanses. So yeah, it's lovely. Oh, Debbie, you, what you've just said is, is so true about the difference between relaxing and resting. Because after what happened to me yesterday, um, my partner went out and bought me some chocolate. <laughs> He was like, here you go. He thought, you know, he was being really kind. He was like, I know you've had a really, you know, tough afternoon. So, you know, let's just chill on the sofa. The word chill. We're going to yeah. chill. Over. Here you go. You can have that. And that's the whole association of resting or what our, our brains believe to be, you know, helping us um, and comforting us. Mm. with a bit of chocolate you know he obviously meant very well and I was like very grateful <laughs> for the chocolate and yes it did taste really good um and then you know the next day so yesterday I think I was actually in a little bit of shock so my body didn't felt a bit tingly and I wasn't feeling like my usual self and I completely missed lunch I hadn't even thought I need to eat lunch and it was really odd because I'm I'm normally quite a hungry person so for me to miss lunch was quite interesting and I thought I was reflecting back I was like what what's going on and you're absolutely right that that stress and the association of that feeling of stress and what you what you then choose to do can make a huge impact on your health over time and it's just I guess about becoming aware of it and being conscious to that but I've remembered what I was going to say Mari, if you want to no say it say I was it gonna say the importance of food prep because we are so busy when my partner gets home from work he's ravenous he's not had time to have lunch or even if he you know if he, if he wanted to he wouldn't have time so he comes home he's like where's the food if we haven't prepped food in advance it will just be raid the cupboards for whatever's there and then normally that's going to be probably quite carb heavy nutrient less it's not going to be the, the the food prepped um you know meals that we've made at the weekend that we've then stored in the in the freezer which we can defrost quite quickly um and that is ideal for those times when 
you're saying, oh, I don't have time to do something and make it healthy. Well, actually, I've prepped my food. I can just grab that, get my salad in a jar in the fridge or whatever the frozen meal that you've or the leftovers that you've had. It's it's there. And I think that's a really great way to have that as a backup for, for those sorts of moments. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, totally. I was just going to say with everything you you two are saying, it all and I remember when I got introduced to this term um several years ago I didn't really know much about it but it all comes it all boils down to how inflammatory we are or we become doesn't it because all of this you know lack of sleep the stress making the poor food choices all of it contributes to more inflammation in our body um it's not just one thing that does it it's not just eating so so basically you see how everything is connected it all ends up being that I was talking um, uh, to somebody about uh, this um, food intolerance test and how, you know, even despite making all the right food choices, seemingly, you can still have reactions to things which suggest there might be some inflammation going on in the body. And she was saying, well, has this person looked at their stress levels? Has this Is this person actually able to really just disconnect have some time out or are they go 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 the entire time um if so maybe that's something that needs to be looked at because inflammation i mean we know this and this is one of the things that we do in our our cleanses and i should actually add that for anyone listening the next cleanse starts on the 8th of april and we would love it if you uh would want to join us on it but and now I've lost my train of thought. This is because I haven't slept. But um, but the whole idea of you know inflammation, it, if it goes on unchecked for too long, it can lead to all kinds of horrible things in our bodies. But it's all connected. It's the food, it's the lack of sleep, it's the stress, it's all it all comes, you know, it all fuels this inflammation, doesn't it? It it certainly does. And I was going to agree a hundred percent about what you were saying, you know, when you notice when you're feeling stress and what you do because with my clients as a reflexologist one of the questions I ask in the consultation form is how does stress manifest in you you yeah what does your body tell you because everybody everybody's body will communicate differently and for some people it will be headaches for some people it will be heart palpitations and sweating for others it will be um digestive issues whether it's being more constipated or you know diarrhea um or just you know kind of cramps in the stomach others will get quite itchy um and it's interesting the responses that I get because there are the occasional client that's like I don't think I know when I'm stressed or I don't really get stressed or and they haven't quite learned what is going on with their body when they experience something quite stressful and I mean yes some people are more zen than others and that's great but there will be little symptoms and little signs little whispers I suppose that your body starts to communicate with you and it, even if it's just psycho- psychological in the sense that you know like a, a racing racing thoughts or not getting clarity of, of mind with certain things which definitely happens with me and I can't think straight um and that can make a big difference because once you recognize those signs it's almost like a like a warning light to say okay stop address what what can we be doing is there something I can change with my sleep, my exercise, my nutrition, um, my hydration, and, and my stress levels? You know, and- Chances are there is, right? I was just coming home from the school right now, and I've been I had a bad night's sleep. I've been awake sort of on and off since five o'clock, so it's uh, not great. And I just noticed myself just getting crankier and crankier, and because the baby was you know culprit he's cranky because he hasn't slept properly so he's then nagging me and whining and just wanting everything and and he he had this sort of foam lego style blocks and they keep falling apart he wants to carry them on this in this big tower so he stacks them all on top of each other and then they because they are not really connected properly they fall apart and he gets so angry um i mean because it, it's not how it's supposed to be and I just realized um, coming home, um, I was just making myself a cup of coffee, which is probably not the best way to relax, but the whole idea of it. And I just sat down and I was just like, <sighs> because I just thought I can choose to stay in this cranky mood 
Or I can just, I know that as soon as everyone's at school and at a childminder, I will just have 10 minutes to myself before I need to do anything else where I can just sit and breathe. I get the sun in my face, would have gone on outside, but here we are recording this or inside, but I would have gone outside and just sat for a bit. And I think we can all manage to find these little pockets of time. Yes, this was 10 minutes for me, but even if it's just two, three minutes, just because actually, I mean, it, you know, Debbie, you might you might tell me differently. And, and I think coffee's got different effects. I mean, it does sort of raise everything in your body a little bit. But for me, just the idea of sitting down, it could have been anything. It didn't have to be a coffee, but it's the smell that for me, it's like, oh, and maybe it's the dopamine, isn't it? Um, but just the idea of just doing something for me, I hear how it, the sound of how it's made. And to me, that's associated with just time to do nothing. Yeah, it's just doing something mindfully, isn't it? It's, you know, you mindfully make your cup of coffee, you s smell the aroma, you sit yes. down and just, and I, I find quite often the, the effect of just holding a nice warm mug of any, yeah. it can be anything. For me, yeah. it's a red bush tea, but, you know, yeah, just drinking that. something. And it's drinking it at the right temperature, not 20 minutes later when you've gone to go and deal with the kids or you've gone and d dealt with a pile of washing and you come back and you your, t your drink's cold because that's yeah, really that. you know but I mean that that always happens to me but I there was something I was going to say about um about stress levels and um I think what it what it is with with stress is that people if they can take these pockets of time and you know I think one of the things when people take that first intake of breath you know when you give that really nice deep breath and you sort of fill your lungs up. And then as you breathe out, your shoulders drop. It's like, ah, it's that lovely sort of release. And that's how you know that you're carrying extra stress. Because if you do, if that, you get that, I call it that drop down feeling. If you get that drop down feeling when you're just taking a few deep breaths, that really, you know, you've been carrying your shoulders up, you've been tense, you've been, you know, you've probably been shallow breathing because we're only breathing from the, the top third of our lungs rather than filling our lungs up completely. It's just those very small changes that can make a massive difference. And if people aren't aware that things can be so simple to make such a radical impact on how you feel, then that's where they need to come with us, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm just going to say, well, part of the cleanse is to do daily breath work. And there's a reason for that. Exactly. Checking, checking in with your body. You know, how are you breathing? Are you breathing deeply? Have you had a moment of stress like Mari where she's acknowledged and become aware of it, is conscious of it, and is in, on per you know, purposely, intentionally stopping, taking a even a, even if it was a minute to do some breath work. Luckily she had ten. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. Luxury. But even just that one minute throughout our busy day to stop, close your eyes feel the breath coming through your you know through your nose breathe out through your mouth mm -hmm. and even for 10 breaths that will make a huge difference over like that cumulative effect that you we were just talking about earlier it it will build up during the day like a pressure cooker otherwise um, i usually say to women every time they go to the toilet because they'll see their they sat down before you actually get up and flush the chain you just need to take in a couple of deep breaths and if you just use that as your cue you're going to be doing that at least six times a day at least you so go. you know just these tiny little pockets just and also usually you're in the loo by yourself maybe not so when you've got tiny kids but you know usually <laughs> you know you, you're not going to be disturbed so you can do that one thing for you before you carry on with your day Massive. I was going to say, never mind the tiny kids trying to get in. I have a dog that wants to get in. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to say, I'm going to uh, very slyly recommend to my partner next time he thinks, what can I do to help Amy when she's feeling stressed is to go and run me a bath <laughs> without the chocolate. And um, I will do the breath work in the bath as well. So for people who take baths, perfect time to do some like deep breathing and stuff as well. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is so good. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to let me just hit record when we weren't supposed to do this at all. I think it's really valuable. It all, no, no, I say it all comes down. I all, often find when I do my culinary medicine study that it all studies, that it all comes down to the same thing. Um, but it's, it's the fit pillars of health, isn't it? Eat well, sleep well, hydrate well, move well, and rest well. Yeah. And doing it 
in a community with other people um, where you have accountability partners um, makes it so much easier for you to succeed. And I want to add this. I never thought in a million years that I'd be feeling the way I feel now or being the weight that I am now or uh, not getting as many sniffles as um, as before. I mean, I still get them now and then. I've got young children, but it's a lot less than what it used to be and it doesn't floor me as much. But I, I would always have been the person to go, oh, it's good for you, but I, I can't ever do that. Oh, that's not going to work for me. And um, I went out with them friend the other day for a coffee and um actually I had red bush tea um and um I showed her a photo of me from like 10 years ago and the difference in my face and how much rounder I was and just how different I looked and more tired uh, as in generally I'm tired today but like generally just tired she couldn't believe it she couldn't believe the difference and I think that's what happens when you when you start realizing that I can do this. Uh, I can make changes to myself. And also I deserve to make changes to myself. That's going to make me feel better. I deserve to feel well. And it's what happens when you take small steps, right? Mm, yeah. You know, it is those small steps that over time, you may not necessarily see the difference, but within a couple of months or you know a year, people will be saying, what have you been doing? Yeah, what are you on? What, yeah, what are you taking? Because yeah. that's, it's the power of the, the small steps. You know, yeah. it's not quick overnight, suddenly you're, you're feeling amazing it, it's it's small steps over time and that, yeah. that will put, you know keep it going for a long time as well yeah, I yeah, still, yeah. When, whenever I see people that I've not seen for a while or, or even strangers they I, I get a lot of comments on the quality of my skin mm, um, you've got great skin and thank you and I do feel that it's because you know I'd like to think it's because I look after myself in fact I know it's because I look after myself you know I've flood my body with nutrients every single day and I just yeah so my skin I think is a really good advert for me um so and it, it's interesting that it gets you know it's it happens all the time and sometimes I think I just take it so much for granted and, and going back to just what you said people notice the difference if you obviously we're looking at ourselves in the mirror every single day and, and quite often you don't see the changes because it's it's so subtle but when people you haven't seen see you you know after a while they notice the changes because it's it's so radical so that's really that's really interesting isn't it that other people notice and it's, it goes back to I think one of the one of the podcasts that we had is that um one of the guys that was taking um uh, uh, the whole food capsules was said that he after four months he didn't really notice a difference but his doctor did yes. in his bloods so uh, that's, it's so interesting because the progress. Yes. Cause quite often, you know, you know, we we put products on our skin. We we you know, we, we dye our hair. Well, I don't actually, but people dye their hair or they cut their hair or they, you know, they, they, they're putting products on their skin. But what we do is where it's health from the inside out. So you have, you know, you if you want to put those products on your skin, great. But then you've got the inside meeting the outside. And they come together and that's when the magic happens because you know unless you've got good nutrients coming in to make new skin cells it doesn't matter what you put on your skin really in my view it's it's what goes in rather than what goes on that makes the difference mm. it's so true and i i had a conversation with a friend who um is a reflexologist and she did some training that i had, had done a year ago called zone facelift which is like a, a natural non-chemical way of lifting the face using massage techniques and, and reflexology anyway she I, she did the training and she said oh it was amazing I've got to find some case studies I was like well if you need me to help then you know I'm more than happy because I know how great the treatment is she's like well I think I'm going to do my sister because she'll definitely be a good subject but because I can't do you you're what did she say your your skin is lifted and you have amazing skin so basically I wouldn't be a great case study because there wouldn't be much change I was like oh okay <laughs> at least I offered <laughs> take it as a compliment take exactly. it as a compliment <laughs> listen ladies I'm gonna let you all go uh, also because my tower garden has started running so it sounds like I'm sat in the toilet which I'm not well that there's a big <laughs> fountain in my kitchen but um thank you so much 
Oh, this is this is really interesting. I am going to uh, put some information in the show notes about where to reach both of you for more advice. And then just to remind everyone that the cleanse starts Monday, the 8th of April. We do this for 10 days. There's 10 guidelines. They're called guidelines, not laws, because you do as much or as little as you want. But as you pointed out, Debbie, the more you can do, uh, the more of an effect you will have. Um, and it's also not just about the 10 days, but it's about doing this on a regular basis to really, really support your health, uh, to support your, uh, or to get to, to lower your inflammation levels, to, um, to lower your stress levels, to aid you in, in all kinds of ways that will over time really help you see a difference in your appearance, uh, how you feel. Other people will notice it. I mean, I know whenever like a Facebook memory comes up for me from like eight plus years ago and I'm like, good grief, who is that person? And that's when I realized the, the changes I've been through because I don't see it, as you said, on a daily basis with myself. But when I see photos from ages ago, I'm just um, like, yeah, oh my gosh, who who is that person even? So yeah, if you wanted to, if you want to um, have a little chat with us about um, what the cleanse is all about, then do get in touch. And um, yeah, thanks so much, ladies. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye. Bye. You have listened to the Small Steps to Wellness show with me, Mari Craig. I love taking deep dives into a variety of topics that are related to wellness. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this and I look forward to hopefully catching up with you.